Alright everybody, hope you're doing well. So I'm Tim here at Digital Llama, thanks so much for tuning in. Today I'm going to be bringing you a brand new Commander Deck Tech. So this is going to be the first monocolored deck that I've done for the channel. And this is Mono Red Goblins with Krenko, Mob Boss at the helm. Before we get started though, it's time for our upkeep step. There's a few really simple ways that you can help the channel to improve and grow flashing up on the screen right now. Another way is by heading over to the channel sponsor, Arcane Cards. They're an awesome online card store stocking MTG singles and all manner of sealed products. Link to the store is down in the description as well as a discount code to get 10% off your first order. So with that said, let's head to the main phase. Krenko is leading my first monocolored deck tech. It's Goblin Tribal and is going to churn out a huge amount of tokens to overrun our opponents with. He's a 3-3 for 4 and you can tap him to create X Goblin tokens and X is how many goblins you control. So the longer he's out, the more tokens we'll be making. Kicking off the 99 with our win conditions, we've got Altar of the Brood. It's a one drop artifact and whenever a permanent enters the battlefield under our control, each opponent mills one. This can get seriously out of hand if you're creating a lot of goblins each turn. Now mill is probably not going to make you any friends around the table so pick your moment when to get this going. Impact Tremors is similar in that it triggers when a creature enters under our control but instead of milling, it deals 1 damage to each opponent. 40 tokens entering play, and we win. Throne of the God Pharaoh is a great EDH card, mostly because of the each opponent clause in its effect. We're going to have a lot of creatures, and turning them sideways is going to reap a lot of benefit. You could also include Perforus in here for even more damage, but I haven't, for cost reasons. So, onto the goblins. Bloodmark Mentor, Gives all our creatures first strike, useful, but not especially deadly. Goblin Chain Whirler is still wrecking havoc on standard, and now it can do the same in commander. It might not wipe the board, but a 3-3 first striker that keeps planeswalkers in check is nothing to be sniffed at. Goblin Goliath is from the Game Night box that came out recently and is such a fun card. I love that he plays on the multiplier nature of our format and could potentially bring some goblin tokens with him, and his tap ability to double our damage dealt for a turn is really powerful. Goblin Lackey is a classic and a great way to sneak even more goblins onto the field. The Matron is a Goblin Tutor, and so is the good old Recruiter. Recruiter is the better of the two, but it's nice to include both. Goblin Ringleader gives us some much needed draw in a colour that suffers from a lack of it. The more goblins we control, the bigger the horde of Bogarts gets, and with his evasion ability in combat, could be a substantial beater. Reckless One is very similar, except its power and toughness are only based on number of goblins rather than any red permanents. Not that there's many in here that aren't goblins. Battle Squadron is yet another variation on the theme, caring about total creatures, whether they're red or goblins or not. Kiki Jiki is a combo card in many decks, but not in this one. It's just here to double up on creatures with great effects, such as Siege Gang Commander. Kiki Jiki-ing him will give us 6 goblin tokens. The Legion War Boss from Guilds of Ravnica gives us a small but steady stream of goblin a turn and just keeps the ball rolling. The Goblin Rabble Master does the same thing, except it makes us swing with every goblin all the time. Can be good, can be bad, that's the way of the goblin. Skirk Prospector gives us a red mana if we sack a goblin, and there's no tapping involved so we can get some crazy levels of mana here. Squee the Immortal from Dominaria is here to weather the storm of as many board wipes as we can face. Yeah, he's just a 2-1, but always being able to recover is rather useful. Treasure Nabba from Commander 2018 is a stunning card that adds so much ramp to our deck. We steal every mana rock our opponents tap for a whole trip around the table, meaning that when it comes back around to our turn, we can untap them all, cast what we want, 
and then hand them back, ready for it to happen all over again. War and Instigator is just a classic cheaty card and Double Strike is nifty in enabling it. So there's a lot of 1-1 tokens being created, but that's not very intimidating, we need to buff them up a bit. Goblin Chieftain is the first of our lords, giving the team plus one, plus one, and haste. The War Chief makes our non-token goblins cheaper and throws some extra haste onto proceedings. The King gives a power toughness boost and throws Mountain Walk into the mix. Goblin War Drums then adds menace to the pile, making our horde harder to block. Coat of Arms goes crazy in this deck. The buffs can be huge, but it also helps their opponents out if they're running a tribal deck too, so watch out. Eldrazi Monument is a key piece for us. The goblins are a traditionally ground-based race, so being able to give them flying is fantastic, and the indestructible isn't bad either. Quest for the Goblin Lord is so easy to get fired up in this deck. Only five goblins are needed, and then they're all getting plus two, plus zero for as long as the enchantment stays in play. Patron of the Aki gives us the same power boost, but only when it's attacking. It's a 5-5 for 6, but we can sack a goblin and it gets flash essentially. Well, we're generating hopefully a shed load of creatures, so what can we do with them other than turn them sideways? First up, there's Voracious Dragon, who devours our goblins, gets buffer in the process, and then deals twice that much in damage to any target creature or opponent. Sack 20 tokens, and that's lethal. An interesting interaction is with the card Bogart Shenanigans. Tokens still go to the graveyard before state-based actions remove them, so we get a trigger from the shenanigans whenever one is sacked. Then there's Massive Raid, which doesn't double the damage, but is still a huge hit. Banefire in itself won't interact with the number of goblins we've got directly, but keep it in mind when we get to the ramp section. Goblin War Strike can't target creatures, but it packs a hefty punch to another player, and Mob Justice does exactly the same for just one more. Just in case Krenko and the others weren't creating enough goblins, here's a few more ways. Hordling Outburst gives us three, Krenko's Outburst gives us two, Goblin Assault gives us one, a turn, with the always attacking stipulation again. Chancellor of the Forge is a beast of a giant, he gives us a 1-1 goblin token for every creature we control, that's a huge doubling up effect. Kindred Charge also basically doubles up on our creatures, except they've got haste and disappear at the end of the turn, still, it's a great finishing move. Empty the Warrens gives us two tokens and has Storm, so we repeat that for each spell we've played before in the turn. Other fun stuff in the deck, depending on your perspective, is Relentless Assault, a super on theme sorcery giving us a second combat step for a turn. If you thought Altar of the Brood would draw the hate, then Blood Moon is all like, hold my beer. We're mono red, and traditionally there's a lot of non-basics being played in Commander. This will shut down large swathes of your opponent's mana bases, and if that wasn't enough, we've got the same card in creature form with Magus of the Moon. Pick your timing right, and you're laughing. Pick it wrong and you'll be twiddling your thumbs until the game is finished. I love throwing Mirage Mirror into decks that lack certain aspects. We lack flyers, so Mirage Mirror really helps to prop us up. Swift for Boots means we can protect Krenko and start tapping him straight away. Char Belcher is a really fun goblin card, adding an element of randomness to the deck and a bit more damage. Disrupt the Core Worm is another really fun card. Goad is a mechanic we don't see very often, but is very good in Commander. Some more damage and removal up next. Mog Infestation is a weird one. We can wipe our own board and then get double the number of creatures back. Super risky, but such a good feeling when it goes off without a hitch. Goblin Bombardment allows us to sack creatures for damage. The Trash Master from M19, part Anthem, part Artifact Removal, and it's repeatable in a single turn, so you can do a lot of removing in one go. Boom Pile is such a goblin card, leaving the board wipe to the fate of a coin flip. It's really fun, but it does quite loudly broadcast our intentions. Chaos Warp is our perennial spot removal in red, and the randomness is on theme again. Comet Storm is a very mana intensive spell, but is really flexible in what and how many creatures it can remove. 
Vandal Blast is even more artifact hate, and for five, we can overload it like a cyclonic rift to sweep away all of the artifacts. As I mentioned before, we're going to struggle a little bit with card draw, but there's a few cards that can help with that. Endless Atlas is a two and tap for a card from our deck. We're guaranteed to have three mountains out by the time we can activate this. Skull Clamp works beautifully in the deck, trading our tokens for cards. Chandra, Torch of Defiance, makes a surprise entry to the list. Both of her plus abilities really help us. Ramp and a pseudo draw, and then that emblem is just nuts and is just four turns away. Remember earlier when I was chatting about Banefire? We're finally onto the ramp section. Battle Him will provide us with a boatload of mana, as will Brightstone Ritual and Mana Echoes is just silly in this deck. So other than that, red doesn't ramp too well, so we're relying on a few rocks. Ruby Medallion is an absolute classic cost reducer from Tempest, and Hazaret's Monument from Amonkhet is a modern classic in my eyes. Gilded Lotus gives us great monocolour ramp, and a Millery Sphere helps to keep those lands flowing. And that brings us neatly to the mana base, which is short and sweet, and really budget. Desert of the Fervent and Forgotten Cave, for cycling, Goblin Burrows for the theme, Nykthos for the devotion, and 30 Mountains, and that is it. And there you have it, that was my really really fun mono red Krenko Goblins deck. If you haven't already, please remember to do all of the usual stuff and consider becoming a patron of the channel, the links up in the top right hand corner. Don't forget to check out Arcane Cards for your MTG singles. As always, links in the description as well as that discount code. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you all on the next one. There's new videos every single Monday and Thursday. Cheers!